All right, fam. Got Tori Archibald on the podcast today. You and I have very, very similar, like we speak very similarly. I feel like we have like the same language. Welcome to, welcome to my show. Welcome to your show. Welcome to our conversation. I'm so happy to do this with you. Oh, Danielle, I'm so happy as well. And the thing that I love is when this morning it drops into my DM, let's make this a double powerful deep dive episode. And I think people need to collab when they're like-minded souls more often because that's where the magic happens. Oh my gosh. I said that today. I was like, you know, the amount of people that think that, oh, if I want to do something, I have to do it alone. And, and I think that there is this, like, it is a weird energy sometimes where people think that going alone is the way to do it. But I feel like I have been most successful in my career, in my relationships, when I've just collaborated. Like I think more is more and there's always space for all of us. And so, yeah, I mean, anytime I get to chat and like just shoot the shit, if you will, with other coaches <laughs> doing doing the work, you know, it's the best. It's the best. So I want to I want to tap in there and just say that, you know, life is based on a mutual exchange of energy. And I 100%. think that for many females out there, they are really scared to ask for help. And I know that I was, you know, one of them for many, many years. When I had my own PR agency. I was afraid of what people would think if I asked for help. Now, when I had my like, you know, moment where I decided to switch careers when I was in my early 40s, I discovered that when I asked for help, it was more powerful. And the collaborations that came through, you know, those beautiful trust your gut instinct moments were able to make greater impact. So if anyone listening, it's okay to ask for help. And most importantly, when it's a mutual exchange of energy, like we're having today, it's more powerful. Oh yeah. Mutually beneficial exchanges of energy are, I think what have saved me so many times. And it's so interesting that you said that about, um, you use to not ask for help. What do you, what do you think? Cause I'm the same. I have been very much, I spent the last few years really healing that for myself, but what do you think it was for you? Like what conditioning was it that made you feel like you can't ask for help? You got to do it yourself. Mm, I started my first business when I was 24 and everyone said to me, you shouldn't do it, you know? And I had that kind of fuck you moment, <laughs> if I can yeah. say that. Oh, you can you say know, whatever you want yeah. on the show. Yeah. So I had a coffee date with an ex-boyfriend when I came back from London, which was really my training ground of what I became really passionate about, which was the power of storytelling. And I said, I wanted to start my own PR company. He said, why would you want to do that? And I said, because I can, you know, I want to be able to tell the stories of, you know, really incredible brands throughout the world, celebrities and influencers. And he said to me, I think you'd be better off getting married, joining a few clubs and just getting on with life. Right. Yeah, and yeah. I just thought, boom, boom. Yeah. Why <laughs> don't you believe that I can create something that's going to deliver impact for others? And so I remember walking out of that um, coffee meeting and just going, I can and I will. And I wrote a book about it. It's called Self-Belief is Your Superpower. So mm -hmm. the number one thing I want to talk about is like when you believe that you can, you will. When you place yourself into a situation, you can attract the most incredible um, you know, clients, um, opportunities, friendships, collabs like we're doing today, because what you're doing is you're working in flow and alignment. So if you fast forward 20 years after him saying to me, no, you can't do that, I had the top PR marketing agency in Australia. I was responsible for some of the biggest launches that ever came into our country. And, you know, I always started by backing myself, but anchoring my every move to my values, intent and purpose. So when you start thinking like that, the possibilities of life start finding you. So the first thing I would say to anyone when you're looking to ask for help or you're looking for self-validation, first you got to look at yourself. Like what, what anchors you to life? So for me, that's passion, integrity, delivery. Like passion, like you, I'm just passionate about helping female entrepreneurs rise. Before it was creating and building brands. Integrity, because I just didn't work want to work with assholes. It was like really, really simple. So I didn't attract them. I attracted them in my personal life, but not in my business life, yeah? Oh, interesting. For a very long time. And then delivery, it's you're only as good as the last podcast chat, the last project that you deliver. So the thing was, I guess I sidelined myself and didn't ask for help because I didn't know that it was available because early on in my career, when I was 24, people just said, no, you can't do that. So I guess I was out to prove that I could. But then I realized through a near-death experience that 
I had to strip out what was no longer serving me to create space that was going to be my future, which meant that if I was going to navigate what I was going through, I needed help. So I learned that asking for help is okay. And it changed my life. Yeah. I resonate with the near death experience. I, I mean, I grew up very much straight A's, captain of the dance team, did all the things, always on the move, always exceeding, always, you know, success was everywhere. Busy, 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 fully attached my worth to it because that's what was giving me praise was, I don't know how you do it all. You've lived so many lives. How have you done so much before you're even 30 years old? And I think for me, it was my dad dying two and a half years ago. And when he died, I just carried on. We're fine. I'm good. I'm going to be fine. I got this. And it's because I had done so much spiritual work. I've done so much energetic work with myself. I have hired mentors as long as I can remember. And so in my mind, I have to do this myself because if I don't, then I'm not like, then everything that I've learned is not going to, you know, it's it's not going to work out. And so it wasn't until a year after my dad died that I actually like hit that energetic wall and really experienced the most epic burnout I've ever had. And it was that kind of, I guess they call it like a come to Jesus. Yeah. Like a come to Jesus moment where you're like, wow, if this is success, I don't want it. And so now hiring out and collaborating and working with others and asking for help, it's everything to me, but Mm -hmm. it's also what makes a true CEO. Like I think that's really where you go from solopreneur to CEO when you're like, oh, I'm not in my genius doing this. So I could spend a month trying to figure this out or I could hire someone whose genius is this and we can get 10 steps farther than we ever would have if I tried to do it alone and we're going to have more fun and we're going to empower more people and we're going to create a bigger impact, you know? No brainer. It's a no brainer. And I love the way you structured that because you can build a team, but you can't build help, right? Right. So you can build a team to grow your business, but for you to grow, for you to be accountable, you need to have a wing woman or a wingman to do that. So my question back to you, Danielle, is like you burnt to the ground like a crispy fried chicken, right? Yeah. You're completely burnt out. (laughs) Ready to quit everything. Yeah. What, what were the steps that you took to get out of that situation of complete burnt out? I asked for help. So I went to people in my personal life who had also lost a parent. And for me, it was one of my best friends in the whole world. His name's Chris and he lost his dad as well. So it was really a, you know what? First it was saying, I'm not okay. Mm. Second, it was, can you help me? Third, it was forgiveness. You know, I forgave the person that thought, like, I forgave the little girl inside of me that was still trying to hold the steering wheel of, I have to do it myself. And I forgave her. I thanked her for doing what she needed to do when she needed to do it. I'm grateful for her. And I was able to go, but it's time for you to, to like move aside because I'm here and this version Mm -hmm. of me is, I stepped, I stepped, I've stepped into my power and I, I understand now that getting help and receiving support from other women and best friends and family is, is true freedom. I mean, that's freedom, right? That's, that's growth. That's freedom. That's salvation. So I love that. You know, the way that I position it is when I had my near-death experience and I lost eight kilos in five days, my appendix burst, I got septicemia. Oh, and yeah. I long, yeah, like long road to recovery, 12 rounds of antibiotics. I sat in front of the surgeon and he said, you are never going to get better unless you invest in a happy heart. And at that point, I'm at the top of my PR game. I'm working with, you know, every major celebrity in the world and brands. And he just said to me, you're not happy. And until you get happy, you will never attract those miracles. So he gave me this mantra, a happy heart is a magnet for miracles. And Mm -hmm. I literally, to this day, every morning I wake up with happiness. And I love the fact that you say freedom in your heart, because if you don't love yourself from the inside out, you are not capable of serving others in a much higher vibration, but most importantly, you're not capable of serving yourself. So Mm -hmm. you need to look 
within Mm -hmm. to seek the answers to rise. And I want to switch this conversation around here as well, because you've made big changes in the last couple of years. You've moved out of a city that you loved. (laughs) You know, you've elevated in in different ways. I've done the same thing. I've like said goodbye to one life and hello to another. Yeah. But that takes guts to do that. How did you trust and back yourself to believe that you could make those changes to serve at a high level? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't just take guts, right? It takes personal power. It takes just this unwavering belief in yourself. And, you know, it's really easy to go, oh, I can't trust my gut. And I'm, a, I'm in human design, I'm a sacral authority. So trusting my gut is how I make decisions. And so there was a time when I would try to out logic my gut and be like, well, on paper, it doesn't really make sense. So like, mm. but if you really take a step back and you look at all of the decisions in your life that you've made that have really worked out for you, like you, you said you, and I, I would love for you to expand on this after it's like, you've started multiple businesses from your intuition. And when we work from that place, it can't go wrong. Like And if you think it can, that's assuming that you already know how it should go, which we don't get to know the how. That's not it. All you can do is trust that little voice inside of you, wherever it's coming from, and go, you know what? Like, I need to continue growing out of every box that I or anyone else ever tried to put me in. And I just need to follow that light because that's that your intuition is the one way ticket to higher self, universe, God, source, whatever you call it. Ego isn't. And so often we let ego make the decisions. And so for me, it was like, I have always trusted my gut. Even, even when I didn't, when I did, I, it was the proof I needed. And so making the decision, like, let's move to Texas. Let's just drop everything and build a house in Texas. And it not even did me and my wife and my son move, but my son's dad moved with us and he lives literally right up the street. And we've worked really hard to develop this really strong relationship between us. So our kid can just be loved. And that's like, I mean, that's probably a whole other conversation for a whole other day, but it's all connected, right? It's when you believe that love and personal power and joy, like you said, joy in your heart, freedom in your heart is the ultimate goal for me it's never been about the money it's never been about the things it's been about freedom having complete freedom to do exactly what I want when I want not have to say no because of money not having to change my mind because of other people's projections it's always been about what is this causing resonance or dissonance in my body does this get me closer or farther away from the life that I want and so in the past couple years making all these big changes has been very easy because of that work that I've done in the past does that that make sense, right? It, it makes complete no, it makes complete sense. And you talk about human by design. I want to mm-hmm. deep dive into like everyone asks, what is it? How do you tap into the power of it? And how does it help you elevate? Yeah. I mean, well, do you know your human design first? No, I don't, but I'm interested to hear from you what it is, Oh Dania. my gosh. <laughs> okay. Okay. So human design is a logical system. So just like you know, just like Reiki or Enneagram or Meyer Briggs or the the I Ching or Kabbalah or any of these things that we look at to figure out like who we are and what we're meant to be doing. What human design does is it kind of takes an Eastern and a Western ideological perspective and it pulls it all together. So it does pull from astrology and the I Ching and Reiki and Ayurveda and um, the Kabbalah and it pulls from quantum physics and Enneagram and Meyer Briggs and it kind of brings everything together in a way where you can see how you are meant to make decisions as well as what path you're meant to take as far as like a life theme. So it's for me what it does for people. Well, here's what I think it does. As a human collective, I believe we are here to evolve expand our consciousness to connect with one another and move forward. And that, if we equate it to a race, there's a finish line, right? And the goal is to get there. And I could be running, you could be jogging, she could be sprinting, whoever she is. And all of that's okay as long as we're moving forward and we're not distracted. Because if we're distracted, then we're not moving forward. And if we're not moving forward, then we can't impact the people we're meant to impact. And so I think what human design does is it kind of gives this bridge for people who haven't quite figured out like what their, what their race is, but in a way that is understandable and digestible. So there's five different types in human design. Everyone's a little bit different the way the energy works, the way your battery is. 
And it also teaches us that everybody is so uniquely different and gifted and superior and inferior don't exist. There's equal but different. And so it re I think human design does a really, really, really good job of teaching that from an energetic place. So what you're doing is you're mapping out a destination for people to make better decisions. Yeah. And it's all based on your bl birth blueprint. So it's not like the Enneagram where you take this quiz and you go, well, sometimes it's this, but sometimes it's that. It's more, it's more like astrology where you can look up your birth chart based on when you were born, where you were born and when where and what day. And it gives you this like snapshot, just like astrology does. It's this a snapshot of the sky the day you were born. And then there's like, it kind of pulls from your astro astrological chart. So your conscious son and your unconscious, like your conscious versus your unconscious personality. It's super fascinating. And I was always an astrology girl. So when I was introduced to human design, I was like, no, I'm not interested. I'm an astrology girl. And then I had a reading done and I was like, oh. <laughs> Oh, um, well now, yeah, now you can oh. see the benefits of, yeah, yeah, I love that. And I mean, I've always tapped into astrology along the highway of life, but I've also tapped into the power of my own story. Ooh, tell, and me about, tell me more, girl, tell me yeah. more. But when I say tapping into the power of my own story, I, I want to talk about it so that people listening can tap into the power of theirs, you know? Mm -hmm. So we have created this five point story framework in powerful steps. Like it's called the business attraction program, because I believe when you own your story, you own your power. So it's very much, I guess, similar to what you're doing in the human by design. But what I'm asking people to do is take a deep, dark look at themselves, right? The good, the bad, the ugly, the highlights, the game changing moments, because this is a story of your life. Mm -hmm. You know, you have one life. You've got to discover what your superpower is. You've got to step into what is your intent and purpose? What's going to give you that happy heart? So we break it down into five separate points. So you get a Google Doc out or a journal, whatever it is. I like the Google Doc because if you're in a position where you can pay forward your knowledge and you get asked on a podcast or a TV interview or to speak to a large crowd, you can tap into different parts of your story. Mm -hmm. So you write it like this. It's like point one is this. Who were you when you know, you're born? What kind of family? What kind of environment? What are the good things you remember? Any energy blocks? You write it all down. Second part is what did you want to be when you left school, right? Mm -hmm. So who did you want to be? What did you become? Like, for instance, people wanted to box me. They thought I should study interior design, get married, have three kids, you know, join a few clubs and life would just be ticking all those boxes. But instead... I quit university, I backed myself, I went and worked for MTV in London, Columbia TriStar, and I fell in love with storytelling. So that's part two of my story. Part three is like, where did you truly step into your career power, right? Who mm -hmm. mentored you? How did you get to the top of your game? So I go, okay, great. Created a business when I was 24, ended up with 22 staff, two personal assistants, working with the top brands, celebrities, influencers. Great, tick it all, right? Was I happy? couldn't see it in there. No, I wasn't. It was a success and survival story because right. behind the scenes, I'm being stalked, harassed, intimidated. I'm a single mom by the father of my daughter. So I have to be brutally honest in this part of my story and go, what are the patterns? Point four is always this. What's your game changing moment? So you and I had a near death experience. We'd place it into that, you know, that Google doc and just talk about, you know, did we see the other side? How do we feel? Who supported us to get back up? And then part five, is who are you today? What do you want? What do you want to step into? So when I look at that, I go, you know, my last big client was Drew Barrymore. And I launched her flower beauty into Australia. I'd never had a photo with a celebrity, even though I had 20 years working with them. My daughter came along to the event. As soon as the photographer said, click, because Drew was like, come into the picture with your daughter. My daughter had been begging me to come. I was like, that part of my career is over. What's the next part? Now, when you look at all of this stuff and you make the time to understand who you are, you'll see all these patterns, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, what roads did you take? What, what, what's the journey look like? And you come to this really, really strong intuitional pathway of what are the steps forward, yeah? yeah? Now, this helped me share the power of what had happened to me, but also it allowed me to stand in my power and shut a multi-million dollar business and start again with nothing. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's the way I see it is like you can also just tap into the story yourself when you take the time to learn who you are and what 100%. you're capable of paying forward. And that's what I believe builds a powerful business. It builds yeah. an extraordinary life, but one based on happiness and freedom. 
Do you think that building, because you said you, is able, you were able to walk away from one and start another, do you think that's why? Is because by that point you had already owned your story, you've owned all these parts of yourself, you've faced the shadow parts of yourself, the parts you don't like, the muddy, the ugly, right? We're right. kind of taught to not feel anything. We're taught to just like, keep moving, don't feel it. But when you actually allow yourself to feel it, it's actually in those low moments that growth has happened, that discernment has happened, that the ability to make decisions differently. Otherwise, we just keep repeating these patterns. So do you think that, right? So do you think that by the time, is that why you were able to just be like, I'm going to leave this and I'm going to start this other thing and I know it's going to be successful? Because I owned every part of the story, you know? And I think that's the hardest part for us as females is owning it. And Why? saying, I don't give a shit what other people think. I don't care about being judged. I don't care about imposter syndrome. What I care about is waking up with a happy heart and being surrounded by the right people. And I think as you go through that process, you'll understand that you probably stripped out friendships, stripped yeah. out work relationships, stripped out family patterns that were holding you back. Yeah. And you, you're elevating as you're moving forward. And so when you can see the elevation, you see the possibilities. But mm-hmm. I think, And I truly believe that the biggest, most powerful step anyone can take in this lifetime is standing in their truth. Now, you know, when we were doing this podcast swap, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love it. Like I look at your Instagram feed, I listen to your podcast and I go, this woman is in her truth. She's my Mm -hmm. type of woman. So when you attract- Power meets power. Yeah, those kind of understandings with like-minded souls around the world Mm -hmm. can create and deliver impact it's because you're not holding back. It's yeah. because you're not afraid. And it's because you're stepping into something magical that's going to make a difference to the lives of others. What was your, like, besides obviously your, like one of your game-changing moments was that uh, that near-death experience. When, and I like to ask everyone this because I'm asked this a lot. I'm sure you are too, is, okay, I understand that. I understand that you stand in your power and you become unafraid and that's how you do it. And I think what you're saying is the way to do that is to own all parts of your story. Is that what you would say is like the like Absolutely. the key that unlocks that door? It is, but I think, and you you spoke about it before as well as when you get uncomfortable. I like to say it's the pain points in life and it's that hot, beautiful mess that you find yourself in where all of a sudden you open your eyes up for the first time <laughs> because mm-hmm. all of a right. sudden you become more aware rather than just being on the treadmill of life. You're like, you know, I open my eyes up and I realize I'm a people pleaser. I realize there's no mutual exchange of energy in my life that Mm -hmm. people want me because I can give them something that they want, but no one's thinking about what I want. So I think an experience like that definitely opens your eyes, but also by seeking help, as we spoke about before, having a wing woman or a wingman, right? They can see what we can't see, which is why it's really important to have a life coach or a mentor because you want someone to say, hey, you didn't think about it like this. Mm -hmm. Open your eyes in a way that you can do things differently. I think that really how you get yourself out of that mess is by asking for help, but also trusting that just because you say goodbye to something doesn't mean that it can't reappear if it's meant to reappear. It's about trusting the process. Yeah. Well, and I think trusting too, that there are always trade-offs, right? Like I, I used to think that I just got to bring it all with me. And at the end Mm -hmm. of the day, you can have it all. I am living proof that you can have it all. And I had to be willing to trust that the things that were falling off, the people that were falling off, the the patterns that were falling off that I clung so tightly to because they they protected me, right? My ego said like these are protecting you, let's keep them, but letting all those things fall off was was the trade-off that was needed in order to actually take the wheel, right? Mm-hmm. And and I think you nailed it when you said like it's it's not so much about, it's not so much about being like, yep, did that, went through it, but it's about to, it's about being able to say like, yeah, I've, I've done that. I've been through it. I'm awake for the first time and no, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and just live in my pain because that's only gotten me 
and you're nobody can I always do this where I'm on a podcast and I'm like making all these gestures and I'm like nobody can fucking see me not one person can fucking see me but I'm making circular motions with my hands and so it's like it's it's this but it's this the society likes to struggle people like to be in this place of struggle and I think part of what you and I are talking about is the willingness to break up with that addiction. Oh my gosh, you got to break up with yourself. Yes. Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Joe Dispenza. Read that book tomorrow if you haven't. <laughs> so good. But yeah, you have to. You have to break up with yourself. You have to because this this version of yourself that you're clinging so tightly to, do you even really want to be that person anymore? I don't think so because otherwise you wouldn't be so miserable. You wouldn't have such an unhappy heart. You wouldn't be trying to people please, right? I'll tell you a quick, I'll tell you this story. I was, I'm sure you have one similar. I was working out one time and I was like, it was like, not, it was, it was probably like a year ago. I got, cause my son's dad and I, we get along very well. Sometimes, however, sometimes he'll say something and I'm just like, mm, you know, it's just that like thing. And that's normal. That's a good reminder of why we are not in a romantic relationship anymore. And bless our hearts for that. However, I got this message from him and it made me so, I was so frustrated by it. And I was like, why am I so frustrated by it? And it was this moment of such beautiful clarity where I was like, no, I'm not frustrated with him. I'm frustrated a little bit with an older version of myself that allowed myself to be gaslit and treated this way. And I'm no longer that girl, which is why I'm awake to it, right? Like once it's not blind, like if it's blind, you don't see it. Once it's not blind anymore, you can't unsee it. And so I think sometimes people get so like when they're, when they're getting triggered by people or when they're getting frustrated with people, it's like, you're not that's actually something to be really proud of because when you were blind to that behavior, you didn't notice. You just, you just were a people pleaser. You just got gaslit all the time. You were taken advantage of and had no idea. And it was this moment of like, oh my gosh, I have come so far and no one will ever treat me like that again. No one. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that you said it's an old version of you because mm. when you step into the new version of yourself, which we obviously on this podcast highly recommend everyone sits in that pain point and discovers yeah. the way forward and it's a mindset switch, but also, you know, just say thank you to yourself for how far you've come. Yeah. And like so show cool. so much gratitude. I mean, think about that little girl inside of us, right? You have her, I have her that like did everything she could to survive. And mm. thank goodness for her because I wouldn't be who I am today without her. And I don't need her to drive anymore. And those are two truths that I think a lot of people get hung up on is they're afraid to let go because of what that could mean. But ultimately... You can be equally as grateful. You can be equally grateful for something and still be ready to let it go at the same time. That's so true. Two truths. How did you step into your personal power? Well, I'm a Sagittarius, so <laughs> I feel so like. My so is my daughter. I'm feeling yeah. like she's always a personal power upwards. Yeah. But it's always a defining moment where you put a line in the sand and you go, enough. Here, here is the next move that's going to take me to the next level in life. What, what was that for you? It was deciding that I was no longer, I no longer needed uh, outside validation in order mm -hmm. to be successful. It was that moment because I, I, so I started like my entrepreneurial journey in the network marketing space. And when I started that, I had already been, well, no, I started my entrepreneurial journey as a fitness instructor, really. Be I was, I was working for a company, but it, you know, when you teach fitness, it's like, you have to get people in your room. And so you have to kind of create this, entre you have to develop entrepreneurial skills to market, yeah, market yourself, social media, all the things. So I had started it working for SoulCycle. And then I, I was introduced to a network marketing space that was kind of like married what I already did so perfectly. And so when I started that business, I went to the top of that comp plan in like 11 months and they said it should take up to five. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep going. But it was, 
everybody was, oh my gosh, Danielle, you're so amazing. Oh my gosh, Danielle, can you train my team? Oh my gosh, Danielle, can you speak at this event? Can you do this? Can you do that? And like, you're so amazing. And I realized only after I got to the top and I had that epic burnout after my dad died that I was like, wow, that chapter just perpetuated an old version of myself that was so addicted to outside praise and validation. I got to the point where- Yeah. Oh my gosh. I didn't even realize, like, I didn't even know why I was doing it anymore. I didn't know why I was doing it for me anymore. I was like, I am literally doing this. I'm trying to hit these ranks and trying to hit these milestones in my business. So other people tell me I'm awesome. That is so fucked. I'm so, and it was just, it was literally a light bulb moment. And after that, I was like, not doing that again. And so now I don't do anything that's not mutually beneficial. Like I don't do anything for the sake of anyone else. So this is an interesting thing because a lot of people go into life working for other people Mm -hmm. and then they say, I can back myself and I can become who I want to be while I'm of service to others as an entrepreneur. You obviously took the leap of faith to do that through burnout, to back yourself, to believe in yourself. What kind of business did you create and what kind of results do you deliver from that? Now or then? Now. Oh, now. I mean, I have... I used to be accessible and available. I feel like maybe we're the same in this. Like I used to believe that I had to be accessible and available all the time in order to continue that success. So it was this, it was this hamster wheel, right? That I just kept running on. And so now my business is, I don't, I don't take calls when I don't want to take calls. I have very clear boundaries, but what that does is it keeps me in my genius. So I can really serve my clients in a really powerful way. I can create these containers, like my masterminds and my group programs, like they're so special and they're so intimate. Even if there are a ton of people in them, they're very intimate in a way of, I don't, I think the difference is where I used to create spaces where I saw other people. Now I create spaces where people can see themselves because I see myself. What about you? Like what, yeah, what did you, like, what do you create now versus like what you used to create before that moment? Yeah, it's very simple. So before I used to create and build brands for other people, then I had to show myself that I could do it. Mm -hmm. I had to prove that I could do it for myself so that I could give others the framework for them to do it themselves. So mine was like a three-step process. It was, you know, creating a framework that worked but transferring the skills across so that female entrepreneurs, you know, CEOs, um, leadership executives could rise in a new and exciting way. And it's all through that five-story framework so that they can become more visible, so that they can attract the right clients, so that they can do business on their own terms, but most importantly, so that they feel valued. And I, I get so excited because when people do feel valued, you know, they get six figure pay rises, they double their business into multi-million dollar figures, mm-hmm. but it's it's so simple. It's because they looked inside here. And so I always say to people, if you want to work with me, my old life is I worked with a lot of egotistical people mm-hmm. and to the point where I was like, I can't do this anymore. If you want to work with me and join the power of our community, it's all heart-led and it's heart-led for a reason. It's you are put in a leadership position or you're put in a role like you are today, hosting a beautiful podcast, sharing these experiences with others because we're the conduit. And the conduit is a magician and the magician is always put in a role to lead, but it's only temporary. It's a temporary role and it's a sacred role. And while you're in it, you must add value to the lives of others. And that's really what I teach people is, You have this incredible superpower. And once we tap into what it is, look at the value that you're going to give to others. And when you can start seeing that value actually deliver results, you know, that's what gives you the happy heart. That's what magnetizes your energy so that when you walk into any room, when you connect with someone, they want to be a part of your orbit because they can see that the power comes from within. Mm-hmm. It's not a Chanel handbag. Mm-mm. It's not a Ferrari. It's none of those things. It's internal. Yeah. And it's not coming from a place of, oh, I'm going to enter your space because I need you to teach me something. It's I'm entering your space because I feel in my heart and you feel in your heart. And together we can do that like in the same space. I think that's like a huge, that's, that's been a huge milestone in my business. And you just nailed it so perfectly. It's when I stopped feeling like, 
it was my job because you said it's it's temporary. We're here to lead and it's we're conduits and it's temporary. And I take that as like, yeah, I'm here to help people see themselves and lead themselves epically. And once they can do that, well, great. Now we just get to walk side by side into whatever's coming our way, which is probably really, really beautiful. And it's, it changes mentorship. It changes the way that you invest in yourself. I think that switch changes everything and it changes the way you interact with your, with your partner, it changed the way I interacted with my wife. It changes the way that I raise my son. Cause I'm no longer looking for him to just like, love me. I'm looking, I'm trying to help him become a self-sufficient, self-led, gorgeous human. And that means that I'm going to have to like, we're going to have to cut the cord for me a little bit. And that it's, it, it connects to everything in our lives, right? It's, it's a Mm -hmm. really powerful, it's a really, really powerful work. Um, I read in your, in your bio that you and I just have to ask because I was like, I need to know about this because it sounds exhausting in my brain. But now that I've been talking to you, I feel like it's going to make perfect sense in my brain. When you say that you think people should do coffee dates, not lunch. Like, I need oh, to yeah. know what you mean by that. <laughs> I have to know because I'm like, you want me to go on three coffee dates a week, girl? I don't want to go on three coffee dates a month. Like, I need you to talk me through this. So, uh, you don't need to go out and coffee date. You can virtual. So, for instance, yes, I would call a partnership coffee date. So, look, when I first started my business, when everyone said I couldn't do it, um, the best advice I got given was coffee, not lunch, because lunch is expensive. And in those days, people just wanted to booze up and have fun, right? Right. <laughs> I came from a rock and roll entertainment background. That's I, was gonna say, exactly I think they what... still do want to do that. <laughs> Not so much. I think everyone's like, everyone's like either extreme or they're balanced nowadays or they're working yeah. through something. So back in my twenties, um, you know, I had to build a network to build a business. I had to show people the how, the why to get the advocacy, to get lift off. And so I just said about going, okay, well, who do I want to connect with? What brands do I want to attract? How am I going to place my energy in that so that I can attract the best of the best? So every week, and I've been doing this since I was 24 years old, I've had a coffee date with someone in my tribe or community, right? Someone I want to partner with um, and someone completely outside my comfort zone. And if you're looking to build a business to shift your energy forward, just to lean in, grow and evolve with other people, I highly recommend this. Because it's based on a mutual exchange of energy. I don't mm. just go and say, oh, hey, I want to partner with you. It's like today. The best thing is you're like, why don't we collab on this podcast? So that to me is like the perfect alignment of what a partnership is. Mm-hmm. How can I help you and how can you help me, right? That That right. is the pure essence of a partnership. Now, um, obviously outside your comfort zone, when I used to have a lot of brands that we represented um, in the US, I'd always come to LA for a couple of days after I'd been to New York. And for the simple purpose of, I wanted to partner with other agencies. Um, I wanted to expand my network, but I wanted to tap into like-minded people. Now mm-hmm. those coffee dates landed, some of the biggest opportunities of my life so one coffee date I had in LA years ago which was a partnership coffee date which was outside of my comfort zone ended up landing me the Drew Barrymore Flower Beauty account because the girl remembered me flicked me an email and said to me oh Tori I've got a client launching a beauty brand in Australia would you be interested in representing it and I was like well yeah it's a hell yeah because I loved her energy the next email is from Drew Barrymore's team you know, mm. so it's it's that advocacy and that referral network that you get by committing to really staying connected with who's in your tribe, who's in your community, by yeah. committing to who do you want to partner with to elevate, to expand your network, you know, to reach a high level in life, but also who's on your bucket list of people you want a coffee date with. Like I really want a coffee date with Michelle Obama. Like okay. she makes me laugh so hard because she's so authentic and in her truth. Um, yeah. I'd also coffee date with Oprah. Like they're two people definitely on my bucket list. And there's a whole lot of other people. But then I go, well, how do I get to those people? Yeah. Because a lot of people go, well, those people are such a stretch, Tori. That just looks so unobtainable. But I go, well, is it? No, it's not. You go back and say, say, for instance, with Oprah, who do I know in her orbit? Yeah. Seven who do degrees I start of separation. With? Yeah. So I ended up interviewing her chief of staff for 11 years, Libby Moore, on my podcast during lockdown. That happened from a virtual coffee date because I went on LinkedIn 
And I started asking questions. Who knows someone that's worked with Oprah? I want to connect with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, when I interviewed Libby, she was all about, you're going to give me a platform for your audience, but how can I help you? So it's a mutual exchange of energy. And that was one of the best podcast chats I've ever had because she'd worked with this incredible woman who'd worked with all of these spiritual leaders around the world and she'd been in the room with them. Yeah. And so the man and her energy was a like-minded, yes, we can connect and create magic together. Yeah. So the coffee dates, it's not exhausting. It's like 45 minutes of your time per week. And it's literally, it's a mutual exchange of energy to shift your energy forward and to allow you to grow, but also for you to add value in a way that's going to have an impact on other people's lives, but also your own. Okay. That feels a lot better the way you just explained it. Cause I was like, I was like, let me get this straight. You want me to, you want me to leave my new house that I love, that I am fine being here every day. And you want me to put pants on and you want me to go and meet with somebody for coffee. I don't know if I can do it, girl, but the way that you just explained that. Yeah. Your coffee, it doesn't matter. Like it's that, whatever, whatever yes. is your plan. All you got to do is just connect with people. So for me, podcast chats and you will know this as well you've got incredible guests on your podcast mm -hmm. for me every time I interview someone from the US and I'm in Australia I go that's a partnership because we always get online afterwards and go well hey there are different ways that we can work together to elevate the relationship and yeah. so that partnership coffee date then goes into the community one so yeah. do you see how it layers up yeah. community partnership outside your comfort zone yeah, it's really, it's really simple. So you can go to my website and there's a framework that's, you know, people can download for free yeah. and it's a game changer. It'll shift your life forward. And just so everybody knows, we've put all of Tori's info and website and ways to work with her and all the things we've put it all in our show notes. So you can go click in there and you can go and experience, make sure you follow her on social media, do all the things, but that's definitely there. It's funny that you say, uh, I will not, it's not funny. It's, it's, it makes sense. Um, so Oprah used to ride at Soul Cycle in West Hollywood, where I taught. Yeah. And so um, I got to know her, ex, the ex-president of the OWN Network, Sherry Salata, really well. So Sherry and I have known each other for years. And now, like, we keep being in each other's orbit. And I've gotten to have, like, to your words, I've gotten to have so many coffee dates with her and just learning all the things that she's experienced and, you know, what she's been through. And it's true. Like, you, we have these bucket list people. But I love that you were like, well, who's in their orbit? Because it is the seven degrees of separation. Like, I always say, I, your, for, for you, it's Michelle Obama. For me, it's Sarah Blakely. Like I want to sit with her and I just want to have a chat because I just know we'd get along, but it's like, okay, well, and, and I'm, <laughs> I'm the asshole that I tell my team. I'm like, I need you to find a way to get Michael Phelps and Lewis Howes and Sarah Blakely on my podcast. And well, um, they're that. like, well, right. And <laughs> of course my team goes, okay. Yeah. Um, how? do you expect us to do that? I'm like, I don't know, like find an email and like, just figure it out. Like, we'll figure it out. Like, we'll get there. I know we will. And they all like, <laughs> I think sometimes my team thinks I have these like antlers on my head. Cause they're like, uh-huh. Yeah. But every time I've said something's going to happen, it does. So a little drop in. I tell that you for what manifestation, baby. Like <laughs> Good one. Let me spend five minutes with your team. And I'm so happy to do this. Because you know what? I bet your team is not following them on LinkedIn. I bet your team is not connected to their EA. And the EA really does pull the strings of everything. Everything. And when we talk about an EA, it's really like a business manager and a friend to many people at that level. Mm -hmm. And if you can have a relationship with someone who's in that privileged position and mm -hmm. you can show them value they're going to start talking about you to the person that you want to lean into and connect with mm -hmm. um and I always say yeah sure social media is a great way to get connected to people and a lot of people think it's through Instagram I don't believe that I believe LinkedIn is the most valuable asset if you want to connect in with these people because they have managers they've got agents they've got friends doing soul cycle just like how you were connecting with Oprah and you know the own network it's there's going to be someone in your orbit and your team should start with that community coffee date who do yep. we know that knows that person yep second second one 
what can we do, which is the mutual exchange of energy that's going to benefit that person to connect us to that next level. And so if you do it in the three stages of the coffee dates, I bet that opportunity lands to you in three or six months. Oh, it does every single time. And LinkedIn is a really good one. I think, I think I'm so glad we brought up LinkedIn because we can talk a little bit of strategy on this, on this episode. The, I think, I think LinkedIn is one of link LinkedIn and Pinterest have recently become some of the most underused and underrated, uh, ways of communicating and marketing. I, I've ever seen. I mean, so many people are like, oh, we have to do everything on Instagram and TikTok. And it's like, yes, does that work? Absolutely. I've built my entire coaching business off of Instagram, like a hundred percent. It works. And what about LinkedIn? Because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you something here. So here you go. What just screen share for a second. Oh yeah. So what you should do and anyone listening to this can implement this because I teach this in my programs. Yeah. What does Captain Google say about you? Okay. So I'm in Oh, Australia. yeah. I want to know about this. Yes. Yeah. Tell me. Okay. So, number one thing that is driving traffic for your brand, Danielle, is your website up here. Yep. But what I'm noticing is I can't see what they're going to for your website because it's not broken down. Yeah. Mm. Well, they're going there, they're landing there, but where where's their navigation? What's their behavioral traits? Mm-hmm. Second thing is you're absolutely right. This here is driving all the traffic, which is Instagram, which is the second thing. Mm-hmm. Third thing is LinkedIn. Yep. TikTok. Yeah. Now I'm gonna just me being the marketing person <laughs> in my background, I'm just gonna be like completely honest with you. Each of these different frameworks in the algorithms of Google are saying a different thing about you. 100%. So you've got no alignment, which is a great thing for your team to go away in action. So you've got, okay, you're a quantum business coach on Instagram. Great. But on LinkedIn, it's saying you're a podcast podcast host and you're self-employed, mm. right? But that's not the main driver of your business. Then you've got Danielle McCleary here on TikTok, but it's not saying whether you're a quantum business coach mm. or whether you're a coach. Then it's got, okay, these are all the different images. Then it's got, okay, YouTube, but it's saying you're a quantum business coach, which is great. Then you've got here on Twitter, something completely different, which is saying LA heart, gypsy soul, actor, dancer. I Like I'm confused, right? I can't even access my Twitter anymore. I don't even use Twitter. Yeah. So we got to clean this up. Okay. Here is, okay. I'm just going to show you something else. So then we go, okay, news. Okay, no news, then it's going to come up videos. You've got your TikTok. People can read into all your really good energy. Your YouTube's definitely working for you. Yeah, Here is. is the difference because this is what we teach, yeah? So we'll go back into here. This yeah. is how you can actually start using all the great tools of LinkedIn, of Instagram, of everything to tell the story of who you are, okay? Yeah. So. This here is like, okay, I've put my own name in Tori Archibald, but it's coming up powerful steps. But the number one thing people are going to my website about now is events. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. Then they want to know a little bit about me, which means that maybe they don't know me. Then it's the podcast and the business attraction program. Sometimes when I'm really pushing my business attraction program, that just goes all the way to the front. So I know that that's what people are going for, right? Right. Then it's, okay, podcast LinkedIn. But the thing is, what you want to do is you want to make sure that every single thing that's written about you is actually telling a story. Yeah. And the best way to build that is through videos. And I, I, I mean, this is so crazy, okay? Instagram videos work. Twitter, I do not even have 100 followers on my Powerful Steps Twitter. I think I've got like eight or 9,000 on my tour star one, which like you, I can't get into anymore because it was my past, not my future. Right. But look at the algorithm of Twitter for videos, yeah? Yeah. And then you go into LinkedIn and all of the videos start coming up for LinkedIn. So if you start posting more videos and showing your magnetic energy, if you shift your brand message so that it's aligned across everything, like mine is global brand builder, yeah, mm-hmm. that you see that in all the conversations. You will also see I always talk about passion, integrity, delivery, my three values. And so when people say to me, oh, you know, your values are what attracted me to your programs, it's because I've been clear. 
So LinkedIn has over a billion impressions per month. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the biggest B2B or B2C tool. 30% of my business is through LinkedIn. Okay. You could drive 40% of your business through LinkedIn as well. You just got to show up every day and, you know, <laughs> not or my care team, what. Or my team has to show up every day and post on my behalf. <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> this is the thing. I go, um, never, ever get too big in life not to connect with those who follow. 100%. So my thing is every single day I spend 30 minutes, I reply to people. Yep. The bigger the people um, as their star rises, they have teams. I get that. I've got a team as well. But what I do do is I make sure that I show up as my authentic self because I know that that magnetizes who I'm going to attract. A hundred percent. This is like something I coach all the time because people. I, I have a program called Mind Blowing Magnetism and it's literally like all about how to do that. And one of the things when I first started my coaching business in six months, I had sold over a hundred thousand dollars like cash in hand through Instagram stories. And it was because people know me and they go, it doesn't matter what you sell. I know who you are. I know what you do. And that's what I want. And then once my podcast kind of started becoming the funnel to that, oh my gosh, it's just become this really big thing. But I love that you showed me that because I actually just hired someone who is a whiz on Google and like SEO and all the things. And so that's what the next thing we're starting is because I kind of hit this I mean, you probably never hit this because you've always been in that world, but I hit this thing where I was like, okay, well, I'm really good at connecting with people on Instagram and I'm really good at connecting people on a podcast and I'm really good at connecting with people on YouTube. So why don't we actually try to make this a system and build it out, build it out on Google. So that's like our next frontier. And you just made me so excited because I'm like, talk about next level, right? You can do that. And I want to see how they create that in the next three months because you can turn around what Captain Google says about you within three to four weeks if you're really dedicated. Okay. The other thing as well is you've got to make sure that you've got all the right meta tags, the right words, the yeah. right conversion language on every bit of copy you do, whether it is on Instagram, whether it is on LinkedIn or YouTube or Twitter or whatever. But just remember this, it's not about the numbers. It's about the way that you show up for others. Oh, yeah. And the fact that you're saying $100,000 on Instagram stories is you were showing up. People were can- connecting. You don't need a million followers. No. You just need a pool of followers that believe that you have something that they want and yeah. that you can add value, which is what you've been doing, which you should be incredibly excited about because all it means is that you're taking your business to the next level now by oh, getting yeah. the back right. Oh, I mean, that's been the theme of my business now for the last six months is I'm like, listen, I can sell ice to an Eskimo, like, cause I respond. I, and I still do this. I respond to every DM. I respond to every comment. Like it's me. It's not my team doing that on Instagram. It's me. Now, if you, you know, on other platforms, it may be my team sometimes, but they're all taking what I've said in other places. Like it's all my voice. And I wow. think, I think people hire like copywriters and things like way too early before they have a brand voice. And then that just kills their, it kills their success It because then people don't know you They're They know a robot and like, you know, we could talk uh, probably a whole other episode we could do is on AI and how, you know, like it's never going to replace the human. It's a great personal assistant, but it's never going to replace me as the human. Um, but that's been like the huge thing is I'm like, great now, I have my my site set on like this multi seven figure brand. The only way you're going to get there is if you get your back end cleaned up. Right. Because and I have to say as well, use that five point story, and you rinse and repeat all the different parts of it all the time. And when we talk about rinse and repeat, it's like rinse and repeat your story because you're always going to acquire new followers. You've got to remind people of who you are but also always anchor it to your values, your intent and your purpose. And if you are so clear, which you are on that, that is what gives your business the bounce. But do not underestimate if you don't align your messaging across all parts of Captain Mm -hmm. Google, it Mm -hmm. will look like it's not a business, even though it's a business. And that's honestly, that's the number one mistake that people make is not aligning all the tools, which are actually, by the way, free for everyone to use. You don't have to pay for it. Mm -mm. You've just got to come into alignment to attract that abundance piece. 
Yeah, it's so true. And it's like, I also, I would love to hear your opinion on this because obviously I have one as well, but I think when people are getting started in their own businesses and building their own brands, the first thing they try to do is like hire the big photographer and they try to like set up the website all perfect. And they try to do before they even have those five points that you're talking about before they even know what they, what their value is and you know, what their, what their pain points are. And before they really know themselves or stand in their power. And I always tell people, I'm like, listen, just like you can't out mindset, bad back end strategy, you can't out strategy, authentic, genuine human fucking connection. Like you just can't. Oh, so true. And I'm really happy that you say that because I think there is a place for a polished look. I really do when you're speaking to the media, when you need to give assets, but what will give you the most bounce is being authentic to you. Yes. And I give a good, good example. Um, you know, there's a great tool, it's called Creator, and it basically will do little videos for you. I think it's like $10 US a month. Yeah. Anyway, I had me on camera within 24 hours, but for some reason, the camera was in all these different angles. So one in the, I'm looking really good and fabulous. The next, I've got a double chin. The <laughs> other one, I'm looking like a little bit like, you know, pale in the background. I put the three of them on Instagram and I go, I'm just going to test. Now me with a double chin rated the best. Now the polished version of me coming from a background working with some pretty insane brands that it's all about the polish would have been like, you can't put yourself with a double chin out there. What are you thinking, Tori? What I'm thinking is I'm relatable and I'm myself and that's what yep. works. Yeah. So to anyone works. out there going, I need to spend $10,000 on a photo shoot. You don't need to do that at all. You can use all these tools that are available for you mm -hmm. just to show up being authentically you. Yeah. And there'll be a certain point in your business where you, and you'll feel it. It's that intuition. It's your intuition. And once you are so in tune with it, I hit that point in my business where I went, okay, it's time to really pay attention. It's time to like, I have this, this I have authenticity, my story. I stand in my power. It's not going anywhere. No matter if I tried. Now, my next step is paying $10,000 to somebody to build out my website the way I want it. It is getting a VA and a team that really understand like Google and analytics and getting your messaging right on the back end and creating a system that works for everybody so that scalability is possible. Those things came after I developed my voice and I figured out who I was and I knew what I was offering and I knew who I was speaking to. And so... I love that we're, I love that we're having this conversation because it is one that is like so missed. I feel like people try to do it backwards and it's like, okay, great. Now you've spent, and listen, I'm not saying that it doesn't work. I have a client that literally was like, no, it has to be perfect because I'm a visual aesthetics person and it has to be perfect. And then I will build it. And like, it worked for her. And that's great for the most, for the majority of people. I think you have to know who you are. You have to know what you stand for. You have to know who you stand for. And you have to be in love with all parts of yourself before. Otherwise, otherwise, all that, all that work you're doing isn't going to matter. It's not going to matter. Um, we'll take this conversation offline, but I'm going to introduce you to the team that I use in the US. Great. So they're amazing. Um, they were the ones that basically set everything up for Mel Robbins and a whole yeah. lot of other people. There's a whole lot of wellness intuitional people that we're working with over there as well through that, but they'll help you with the systems. Great. Um, and there's also, I don't know whether or not you've hired someone, but there's an amazing Canadian company that we use for the back end of the brand SEO. I did. I did just hire somebody for that. Well, and so that, good. that I'm good, but yeah, I mean, I'll take anybody and everybody that you got because yeah, this yeah. is, well, this I is mean, your I'm wheelhouse. <laughs> love it look it took me a while to get the right people because a lot of people are full of shit mm -hmm. um but you've got to call them on the shit early on so that you don't yeah you don't One of the best money. advices I've been given is hire slow and fire fast and oh, <laughs> I was like oh that's great because I'm also like I will always see the optimism so I'm always the one that's like well you know maybe they're gonna figure it out and then I finally learned I'm like no if it's not working you know it's not working and like release it so you can actually call in what you're what you're meant to have and that was a huge switch in my business when I was like hire slow fire fast hire slow fire fast and it really did oh, I love it. yeah it really did um, make a difference now Danielle how can people join your mastermind 
So people can join my mastermind. I would say the best way to do it is either go to my Instagram, Danielle underscore on the daily um, link in bio has all the information there. You can also just go to my website at Danielle Um, Everything is everything is there. My mastermind is called scale to six and it's a really badass space. But what about you besides the website that we're going to your website that we're putting on? Is that the best place to find you? powerful-steps.com um, podcast is powerful stories instagram is at powerful steps and of course linkedin tori archbold yeah that's but the next day. frontier <laughs> this feels like it feels like an episode of star wars for me like it, the next frontier is linkedin for me <laughs> uh, totally uh, everyone says to me tori why are you on linkedin i'm like why would i not be on linkedin right this has the world's biggest algorithm and it can give your business the best bounce if you use it in the right way. Well, we started selling digital products using Pinterest and people are like, Pinterest is still a thing. I'm like, Pinterest is a search engine, y'all. It's not a social media platform. It is a search engine. You sell something on Pinterest, it's going to go way farther than you try to sell it on Instagram. Totally. So, uh, well, I adore you. This has literally just been such a fun, fun conversation and just such a testament to like, Power meets power. Collaboration is king. And I adore you. 